Design tables can be an efficient way of creating configurations of parts and assemblies. In this lesson, we will focus on design tables for parts, but design tables for assemblies can be done and will be focused on in another lesson. An important note about design tables is that it's an embedded Microsoft Excel worksheet that's saved in the file. This means that you need to have Microsoft Excel installed on your computer to use design tables in SOLIDWORKS. But in doing so, design tables give you the power and functionality of Microsoft Excel to configure things such as dimensions and feature suppressions, as well as other things. This way you can quickly and easily create entire families of a design. In this lesson, you'll learn the process of creating a design table by using this model of a socket. We will create a family of six point sockets and then another family of 12 point sockets in various sizes by configuring dimensions and suppressing a feature all through using the design table. If you want to follow along with this lesson in SOLIDWORKS, you can download the part files from the description of this video. The files were created in SOLIDWORKS 2019, so you will need 2019 or newer to be able to open and use these part files. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. We will be using a design table to create a family of components based off this initial design. First, it's important to cover some of the details of how this part was created and the design intent behind it. Some of the features and dimensions have also been renamed to help identify them during this lesson. First, let's use the rollback bar to go back through the history of the features and see how the part was created. If we take the rollback bar and drag it up to the first feature, we can see that it's just been a simple cylinder extrusion. The next feature is a hexagonal cut. And if we click on the sketch and then double click on the dimension, we can see that this dimension has been renamed to hex flats. By default, SOLIDWORKS will name dimensions as you place them, but they'll be in a generic syntax such as D1 at sketch one. So this dimension has been renamed to hex flats just to make it a little easier to identify later. There is also some design intent behind this hex cut. If I change the 12.5 millimeter dimension to 16 millimeters and rebuild, you can see that the wall thickness is now much thinner. That is because currently there is no relation between the hex flats dimension and the diameter of the cylinder. For example, if we change that 16 millimeter dimension to 20 millimeters and then rebuild the part, you'll see it's causing an error because that hexagon cut is now too large for the diameter of the cylinder. So let's just go back and double click on it and change it back to our original 12.5 millimeters and then rebuild the model. The design intent here was a very important consideration as we will be using a design table to configure the dimension to drive other socket sizes. With that in mind, we will be able to use a formula to ensure the outer diameter maintains a constant wall thickness based on the hex cut. Move the rollback bar down one more position and we can see a circular pattern feature has been used to create the 12 point version of this model. It's doing this by replicating the geometry of the first hex cut and rotating it 30 degrees around the axis of the cylinder. Again, moving the rollback bar down one more position, the drive feature is a square cut at the base of the socket. And our final step is a chamfered edge to the top and bottom of the part. Now that you have a better understanding of the features and design intent behind creating this part, we can move on to creating the design table. Many of the dimensions that were used in this part will be used to create additional configurations through a design table. So what we can do is display all the dimensions that were used to create features in this part. To do this, go over to the annotations folder in the feature manager tree, right click on it and go to show feature dimensions. Now you may not see all the dimensions like I am now, but that is probably because the dimension is being hidden inside the geometry of the part. For example, if I just rotate this around, there's a six mil dimension on the base here, which I wouldn't normally see. And you can just click on it and drag it back and then go back to your view. So for example, if this was inside the part, you may not see it. So you can just click on it and drag them out so you can make them more visible that way. Next, go over to the configuration manager tree and you can see currently we only have one default configuration. If you need more space, you can just drag this window out. The design table we create will add configurations to this list. To create a design table, go up to insert tables, design table. In the property manager, there are options for how we want our design table to be created. 
Auto create is generally the easiest way to create a design table. Auto create will generate tables from existing configurations, dimensions, and features. This option is a good place to start when you're new to design tables. The blank option creates a new blank design table where you'll need to add dimensions and features to it manually. The from file option will allow you to use an existing Excel document that's been set up to function as a design table. The from file option will allow you to select an existing Excel file that has been set up to work as a design table. SolidWorks needs a very particular format to the data in Excel worksheets. So it's important to have a solid understanding of how design tables work if you plan to use this option in the future. For this lesson, we will just use the auto create option as it will create the formatting for us. The edit control group box lets you determine whether the table and model will be bi-directional, which means if you make a change to the model, the table will update automatically and vice versa. The other option is block model edits that would update the design table. This means that using the design table is the only way to edit configured items. With this option enabled, you would not be able to edit dimensions that are in the design table through the SOLIDWORKS interface, and instead you would have to modify them through the design table. For this lesson, leave it at the default option, which will allow for bi-directional changes. In this lesson, no other options are needed to be changed, so you can click on the green check mark to create our design table. When you do this, you'll see a pop-up appears on screen asking us to select the dimensions we would like to add to the design table. Remember earlier I pointed out one of the dimensions had been renamed to hex flats? Well now it's easier to identify because all these dimensions are showing up in this pop-up window and we can see the hex flats dimension here. The hex flats dimension is one that we would like to configure using the design table, so click on it to select it. Also the cylinder height dimension as we will use this to create a family of short and long sockets. To select multiple options, hold down the control key on your keyboard and then pick the dimensions that you require. Keep in mind that you can select as many or as few dimensions that you want to use in a design table. It's recommended to start simple as you can always add more dimensions to the table later. The cylinder diameter dimension will also be useful as it will control the wall thickness of the socket, but we'll skip selecting it for the moment so I can show you how to add dimensions to the table manually. To continue on, click OK and the design table should now appear. Remember, you do need Microsoft Excel installed on your computer, otherwise the design tables will not work. Also notice that once the table is up, the command manager up the top has changed to a typical Microsoft Excel toolbar. These tables act and function the same as Microsoft Excel. So we can do things such as resizing the cells, copying and pasting cells, or formatting with different colors and styles. If you need the table to be a larger size, you can just grab the corner and drag it out. In our design table, the first row contains the title and the second row contains the properties, dimensions, and features that will be configured. The third row contains the first configuration. In this case, it contains the default configuration since we use the auto create function. Next to it are the values for each of the parameters that are being controlled by the table. Let's see how we can add additional items to be configured by the table. Say we want to add this circular pattern that was used to create the 12 point feature. The suppression state of that feature will determine whether the socket is a 6 point or a 12 point version. To add that feature to the design table, click on the next cell here, and you can click on the feature through the graphics window, or we can go back to the feature manager tree and select the feature from here. So double clicking on it will add it to the design table. SOLIDWORKS will add it to the table in the syntax of state at and the name of the feature 12 point. In the row for the default configuration, the state of the feature is automatically set to unsuppressed. We also need to add the cylinder diameter dimension to the table. Because we have all our dimensions visible in the graphics area, we can select it directly from the graphics area. Click on the next cell and then double click on the 20 mil diameter for the cylinder. This should add it to the design table. So you can now see the dimension is added to the design table along with its corresponding value in the default configuration row. If you want to reorder columns in the design table, it's the same as Microsoft Excel. You can just select on a column and cut and then select on another column, right click, insert cut cells. So you can move things around to make it easier to identify things. 
By this stage, the table contains all the dimensions and features we plan to configure using the design table. All we need to do is enter the names of the new configurations and adjusting the values for the parameters in each one. The default configuration represents our model in a state we will call 12.5 short 12. 12.5 is the size of the hex, 25 is the short length, and this will be a 12 point socket since the pattern feature is unsuppressed. Copy and paste this row by highlighting the cells and going to control C and then going to the next row and go control V. And we can do this one more time. So you should have three rows like this. So this will create our next two configurations. Let's start renaming these configurations. So the first one will be 12.5 short 12. If you need to see the name more clearly, you probably just need more space. So click between the cells and just drag it out. To make it quicker to rename the next two, we can just grab the corner of the cell and drag it down. And then we can rename these two. So it's going to be 16 short 12. And the next one will be 20 short 12. The primary difference between these configurations and the default configuration is the hex flat dimension, and that controls the size of the hex cut. So we will enter the values for those now. At the start of the lesson, I pointed out that if the hex size changes, we need to consider the wall thickness of the socket. Right now, the original configuration, which has a hex flats value of 12.5 millimeters, has a cylindrical diameter of 20 millimeters. We would like to maintain this 7.5 millimeter wall thickness for each of the configurations configurations. To do this, we can use a simple Excel formula. To create the formula, click on the cell that has 20 and type in equals, and then click on the hex flat cell next to it, and then add and 7.5. And you should end up with the same answer of 20 mils. What this is doing is it's taking that 12.5 hex flat dimension and adding 7.5 millimeters to equal the cylinder diameter of 20. So you may see that nothing's changed, but if you double click, you'll see the formula and you can also also see it in the formula bar at the top. To copy this formula to the cells below, just click on the cell and then move your mouse to the corner and then drag that point down. And this will copy the formula down through the other cells. So currently our configurations are all showing 20 mils when these should be a little bit larger uh, based on that formula. And that's because the hex flats dimension is still the same throughout the configurations. So we also need to update these to be 16 and the next one will be 20. And you should see that the cylinder diameter dimension updates through the other cells. So these will now update to show 20, 24 and 28. Next, we can add the six point version of the socket. This can be easily done by first copying and pasting the three rows we already have and then making our adjustments to them. So we can click and drag to highlight all of this data. Control C on the keyboard, click in the next cell below, Control V, and that will paste it all. And then we can rename these configurations. We need to rename them to replace the 12 with a six. So go ahead and replace each 12 with a six. We also need to change the suppression state for these six point configurations. You can do this by clicking on the cell and typing in suppressed, but there is a shortcut. SolidWorks recognizes U as unsuppressed and S as suppressed. So you can just type in an S and for the unsuppressed state, just change that to U. So you should have an S in each of the six point configurations and a U in each of the 12 point configurations. Another task for us is to create a long version of each of the sockets. With most of the information already there for us within the design table, this will be pretty easy to do. What we can do this time is highlight again all of our data, control C, go down to the next blank cell and control V. And then we need to rename each of these from short to long. So just go through and rename each of those new six configurations from short to long. The next step is to change the values for the cylinder depth. For the long configurations, change each from 30 to 60. We have now created an entire family of parts based off just one original part file in only a short time. Let's take a look at our new configurations. To exit the design table, just click anywhere in the graphics window area. When you do that, a pop-up will appear saying that our new configurations have been created and just click on OK to close the message. Click on the rebuild part just to make sure that any updates are forced through and then switch to the configurations manager tab and you should see all of our new configurations created in this list. Notice that the configurations we have created have like a little X symbol. This means that any of these configurations with this symbol are being driven by a design table. So if you see that symbol in a part 
file you open is a good indication that the configuration is being created by a design table. So as we double click to activate our configurations, you'll see the model changes to fit the parameters we set. So as we move through them, you can see our short and then our long 12 and our long six. Some of the dimensions on screen appear in magenta. This lets you know that they are being controlled by a design table. To edit an existing design table, make sure you're in the configuration manager tab and you should see a tables folder. If you click on the little arrow to the left, it'll expand it and you'll see the design table. When you right click on this, you'll see options to edit feature and edit table. If we click on edit feature, this takes us back to when we first created the design table. So you can set options for from file or edit controls and that sort of thing. So we can click on that to cancel. If we right click on it again and go to edit table, we will be taken into our design table. But before it does this, it's going to pop up with a window that is asking if we want to add any dimensional changes or features that have changed in the model since we last used the design table. So you can either add them here or you can just click on cancel and that will put us through to the design table. Once we're back in our design table, we could make any changes we wanted to, such as value changes or suppression states. And then once we're finished, we can just click outside the table again to close it, click on rebuild to force any changes, and that's how you would edit an existing table. To finish our model, we can go back to the Feature Managers tab, to the Annotations folder, we can right click on it, and just again click on the Show Feature Dimensions. This is going to hide the visibility of those dimensions and clean up our final drawing. So as you can see, part design tables are extremely powerful. You can create common items like you see on screen, like a socket or a screw or a nut, and just start with one design. And then through the use of a design table, create many, many styles and different sizes, different lengths, whatever you need from that one original design, all within the one part file. It would be good to just at least get familiar with this tool, because I'm sure in a professional office, you will probably find a use for these in some stage. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the lesson and also the end of chapter two. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's move on to chapter three, which is going to be about assemblies.